By the end of this video, you'll be able to play or sing 11 over 8. I think. Don't you love the smell of ambition in the morning? No, 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 no. I think it's a lasagna. I think it's burning! <laughs> welcome, welcome, everyone, to episode 39 of Time Consuming. First off, I want to thank you guys for the amazing support on my Patreon page. I didn't expect it to grow so quickly, so thanks a lot. In this video, I want to offer an alternative way of thinking about some intricate musical ideas through this concept I like to call shifting gravity centers. This theory video will help explain some of the songs I want to talk about later on in the channel, so I might as well dive into this first. When you look at a rhythmic musical pattern, or a clave, as some of us musicians refer to, you can always break it down to its core and translate it into notation. So this common bossa nova pattern, for example, can be represented like this. One two three one two three one two three four one two three 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 four one two three one two three one and this not as common pattern for example can look like this check out Avishai Cohen's song Punk DJN by the way for this one it's fast and hard to catch but it uses this clave One two three four five. One two three four five. One two three four five six. One two three four five. One two three four five. One two three four five six one. For this video, I'm gonna focus on the main claves. The idea I call shifting gravity centers deals with the manipulation of these numbers, the subbeats, while the main clave stays fully intact. When diving into this rabbit hole, we get into scary musical notation concepts called ratio tuplets and nested tuplets. These concepts, roughly speaking, allow you to squeeze in sets of notes in places they wouldn't fit in quote-unquote naturally. Sean Crowder, who suspiciously looks like me, has a great video about these and an awesome channel in general, by the way. Check it out. You can't really say nested tuplets or ratio tuplets without mentioning Frank Zappa. He was a musical pioneer in regards to everything, and he uses these a lot in his music. Check out the black page, for example, but fasten your seatbelts. Also, drumline drummers deal with this kind of super intricate notation methods all the time. Wait, so if these things exist, why do you have to come up with a new term? Why do you have to make everything complicated? Yo, like the lasagna earlier. You could just put the stupid pasta things on. You don't have to make shapes and weird references about polyrhythm. Now that wasn't awkward at all. Anyway, the reason I'm trying to share this method is because ratio tuplets and nested tuplets are super advanced notation techniques that might be intimidating if you're not mega deep into notation which leads many good musicians and composers to not even bother and try and go there. But this concept is too cool for you to miss out, and it can be way more intuitive than it looks on paper. I'm not as concerned about how to write these down. Rather, I'm way more interested just to explore how these sound like. And I think a change in mindset may open some doors here. My goal here is creating an illusion where the whole groove changes its face and sounds faster or slower, while the initial clave doesn't go away, which is exactly what this video is all about. Let's dive in. Here's a very common pattern. It's basically eighth notes, where I only play these ones. Now let's lose the click. Of course you still hear it within the context of the click track, but for one second, 
Try very hard not to. Try to only hear the sclave for what it is. When I listen to it this way, I hear three chunks. Long, long, and short. Kind of similar to how some Turkish and Balkan musicians refer to their traditional dancing music rhythms. Check out this video, by the way, for more about that. So these will be our gravity centers. And now the cool stuff begins. We need to dial in some numbers now. And the rule of thumb is this. You can dial in any set of numbers that you want, as long as you keep the ratios intact. So long, long, short stays long, long, short. Which means you'll have two identical numbers, long, long, and then one smaller number, short. For example, 332 which is also where we started. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. The goal here would be to try and find sets of numbers that would result in a continuous pulse that would be as smooth as possible while we keep the ratios intact. Let's have fun with this. How about we increase it all by 1? So instead of 3, 3, 2, we have 4, 4, 3. The ratios remain the same, it's still long, long and short, so it's supposed to work. Oh, and it does work. And this totals at 11. Let's put some uh, bass and drums on it, shall we? Not bad at all. And give it up to uh, Leo Rosaria, by the way. He's gonna be working hard today. Shall we try another one? I mean, of course. Let's push it up another number. So, 554. Oh, this doesn't work as well. I mean, it sounds cool, but you can really hear that 4 is significantly faster. So I can't really say that it sounds like a smooth, cohesive pulse. But we can try 3, can't we? I mean, it's still shorter than 5, so it keeps the long, long, short in check. Let's see. It works! I do have a theory about why the 3 works but the 4 doesn't. And my Patreons will get a short video about it. See what I did there? Yalla Ozeri, join me! The cool thing about these is that by respecting the long long short structure and not changing it, the feel of the initial clavis stays, which is why this 11 or 13 over 8 doesn't sound that weird. Let's see if we can play them one after the other, and notice that you're gonna feel like it's speeding up but staying in the same tempo at the same time. It's pretty cool.
So something to notice. Mathematically, this doesn't really work. I mean, you can't really fit 11 or 13 notes in the span of 8 notes and actually expect to have some points in the middle where they collide. It's just, it doesn't work that way. There is a discrepancy here, which means that if you try and make sense of this with a computer or try and dial it into a DAW or some notation software, you'll have to find a workaround. It just won't fit. But the deviation is so small that our human ears and brains kind of just blurs it out. And once we play it with enough confidence, you as a listener will never pick up on that misalignment. Which leads me to the next point. Tempo really matters here. So the slower you go, the bigger that discrepancy gets and the harder it is for our brains to blur that line out. It doesn't really work in slower tempos, so try it with caution. But in faster tempos, it's epic. Check this out. Now that we've covered all this, I can finally go ahead with some extra cool and extra hard songs I wanted to discuss. That's it for today. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you don't like this video, and you got this far, maybe it's time for some uh, inner reflection. And if you really like my channel, consider joining my Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.